Yo. How's it going everybody and welcome back to this Mantine course. We're almost done with the series and in today's video we're going to be learning about how to work with the notification system at a high level and we're going to make a quick project. Uh, before we do get started this video is a recommendation by this guy John. Um, this was a suggestion and it was a pretty good suggestion that I thought that we should run over quickly. And so by the end of the tutorial you have a high level understanding about this component, how to work with it and we'll be making this pretty cool small project where we're making a simple uh, Axios get request to an API to a NBA API where when we click on the button we'll see a notification and then by the time it's completed the data gets loaded and then we actually see it right here so without further ado let's get into it alrighty so I've opened up the documentation for the Manti notifications and if you scroll down the very first thing we see here is that it asks us to install the packages which is just notifications. We've already installed the core and hooks, so we don't need to, we don't need to worry about that. We won't install this right now, but we're just going to quickly run over the documentation before we do get started with the app. All right. So after that, we have a small demo of a few examples of the notification that's available to us. The very first one is the default notification. It just asks, it just says it's a default notification, and in the subtitle, it says, "Hey, your code is pretty awesome." Not. I don't know why that's always running me like Borat, that one scene with the comedian guy. Uh, anyway, so after that we have the uh, teal with icon. So we have a uh, check mark that we can close, a red color, a, um, a notification that doesn't close unless you actually click on the X, a 10 second timeout, and a loading and state update. Like so right there. So after three seconds, it goes from loading to complete. Alrighty, so the usage is pretty simple. Um, in our index.tsx file, this is where we would put the uh, notifications provider. So we just have to uh, encapsulate our app with that provider, and that's it. And after that, if we want to use the actual hook at any place in the application, all we would have to do is uh, this use notifications variable right here. And then on the click of a button, we can call a notification, a specific notification, or either update, show, etc. And then we can give it a prop such as title, message, icon, that type of stuff. And after that, we have the use notification hook. Uh, the hook returns an object with properties. So these are all of the items that we can actually associate with our use notifications function right here. So if we did like notifications, we can do show notifications, update, hide, clean, clean queue, uh, or queue, or notifications in itself. And after that, if we scroll a little bit lower, we'll see the actual props and what their types are. And underneath that, we have the notification props. So we have the first one, ID. Uh, notification ID is used to update and remove a notification. Uh, by default, it is randomly generated. After that, we have disallow close. This basically removes the close button or uh, makes it appear. Um, and so now, notifications can only be closed programmatically, such as with a set timeout. After that, we have the on close. This is when the notification is unmounted and on open. When it is mounted, uh, auto close. So defining a timeout where the uh, where the notification will be closed after a certain amount of time. Um, if we want to disable it, all we have to do is set it as false. After that, this is mandatory. This is the message field. Um, this is basically to display that one message that we saw that little Borat thing I was talking about earlier. Uh, where if I click this again, we see like, hey, there, your awesome, your code is awesome. Not. And then after that, we have the color, icon, title, radius, class name, style, and loading. And these are all props that we can provide that is originally from the notification component right here. And right afterwards, we see that there is a bare minimum. And this is just the message right here uh, that says hello. And after that, we have all the possible notification props from ID all the way to loading and a little bit of styling and everything in between. After that, we have an, a live example of how we can actually style our notifications. So we can either have it loading, disallow close, so you can tell, see how the uh, X goes away. Uh, we can add a little bit of styling to the icon if you want, have a huge amount of radius or no radius at all, change our title up, or change our description. After that, we have a container position. We're not going to be dealing with this at all in this tutorial. After we have a limit and queue, so this will allow us to actually limit a certain amount of um, maximum notification that can be displayed at one time. So in this case, they have five. So if I were to click on this button right here, it would actually only show us five because that's what we've limited it to. So if I click it right now, it'll show one, two. Let me zoom out. 
show five right here, six. Every single time one is removed, it'll add another one, but keep it as a maximum of five. And so after all this, we can see our clean queue and clean all handler in effect right here. So if I click on this show 10 notifications, we'll see our five. But if I click on one and I remove one notification, we'll see another one pop up all the way up to 10. But if I were to click on clean queue, now all the other notifications from seven to 10, they no longer exist. So if I click on number two, it won't add another one. If I click on clean all, it'll just get rid of every single one that's even available anywhere. Alrighty, after that we have the update notification. This is something that we can use to be able to update a individual notification to display something else. So in this case, if I were to click on this show update notification, we'll see that it's loading. After three seconds, it'll have loaded. And then after two seconds, it'll automatically close. And you can see that there's a distinct thing that the way that is working is that there's a const ID equal to the notification. So on the click of the button, it'll uh, begin this and then afterwards after three seconds it'll get rid of this and then it will start this up and then the way that it knows to actually remove this specific notification is through the actual ID itself so this is mandatory if you want to update a previous notification you can see right here auto close on three seconds on two seconds and you want to remove this notification on three seconds all right we're almost done so we have this auto close right here we can define it if we want to close all notifications at a certain point in our notification provider using auto close. And after 4,000 milliseconds, it will remove it. After that, we have the, if we want to use it in an individual use notification hook, we can provide it as a prop or we can set it to never close. And after that, we have the show notification and update notification have higher priority. So we have examples of how that works. So we have a notification provider timeout after four seconds that closes after 500 milliseconds that closes and this one will never close unless we actually click on the X and finally we have the react node in notification message it says here you can render any react node in notification message for example input or button combine this option with other settings to achieve a desired behavior so if you click on this we see this little subscribe to newsletter and we can click on this button and it'll send it on its way and on that click, we can actually have it trigger a function that runs in our backend that actually collects these emails and does stuff, whatever stuff we want with it. Alrighty, I think that's enough about this whole documentation documentation stuff. I scroll to the very top of the docs and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this npm install package to install notifications into our app. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up my VS code. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and paste that hook that command right there and before we run it I'm also going to install Axios into our app so we can have a quick easy get request to a uh, NBA API next I'm going to do is in my, in my components folder I'm going to create a file called notifications example .tsx and just so we have some content in there I'll just go ahead in my input example I'll just copy this code and I'll paste it into there I'll change the actual function name, so I'll call it notification example, and I'll save that. Let's get rid of this content so we don't need any of it. And I'll just type in test, just so we have some stuff there. Let's get rid of this as well, and let's get rid of all of this. Perfect. Now let's go into our app shell. At the very top here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this text for our link. And I'll change this to notification page. And same thing here, I'll get rid of this and I'll call it notification page, like so. Scrolling down here, I'm gonna copy this path. It's gonna direct to notification page. And the element will be notification example, like so. And now if we go back into our app, we should see, if I go into, oops, let's refresh. Right, we don't even have the app running. Let's go ahead and start that up. All right, now we have the notification and it's all connected. Now, before we do begin, we need to actually contain our entire app in our notification provider or else it just won't work. 
So this is how it's going to look. All you have to do, oops, all you have to do is we have to import the notification provider from Mantine Notifications, and then we just have to encapsulate the app like so. So here's our app and here's a provider. All right, now I'm going to open up my notification example, and the very first thing that we have to do is we have to import all of our uh, packages and use state and use effects. So the first thing I'll do is import our use state and use effect. So I'll do use effect and use state from React. And afterwards, I'll do import button from at Mantine Core. After that, I'll do import use notifications from at Mantine Core slash notifications. And after that, I'll do import Axios from Axios. And finally, import a basic check icon from our at modules slash radix icons. Perfect. All right, now that we have everything imported, what we're going to do is we are going to call our use notifications hook. So to do that, I'll do const notifications is equal to use notifications, like so. And after that, I'll do const uh, random player and set random player from, whoops, not from, I got, I got imports in the mind right now, uh, use state, and I'll do first underscore name, which is going to be equal to an empty quote, like so. And after that, I'm going to create our simple get request from the API. So the const uh, get player name, and we'll make a function call. And for this function call, I'll do axios.get. And the URL, let me just go ahead and copy it will be https baldonlie.io slash api players 237 which gets us the best player of all time lebron james don't at me then i'll do dot then which will do response and with the response we will set our random player to be res dot data and after that we're going to actually set our notification so when we actually want to display our notifications uh, been successful, so we, once we got the actual data, we want to display a notification. So I'll do notifications dot show notification. And the very first thing, the minimum thing that it needs is a message. So for the message, I'll say, we got your data. And for a title, I'll just say, here's some data. And for a color, since it's a success message, it makes sense that we do green. And for an icon, we'll do the icon that we've imported, which is our check icon, like so. And after that, if I scroll to the very bottom, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this test, since we don't need it anymore, and I'll import a button tag whoops, a button from our Mantine core. What is going on, button? Uh, I think it's this, there we go. And the button will say show data and the button variant will be equal to outline and on click, we want to actually run our um, get player name function and to display a notification that we're actually getting the data uh, from the API. So first thing I'll do is notifications dot show notification and I'll do a simple title that says we are getting your noti oh, our, your data. I think that's more appropriate that if we have that as a message actually so we'll do message instead, and we'll just leave it as that. We don't need any title. What is the issue here? Unexpected identifier, there we go. And finally, we're gonna run our function in the onclick. So I'll do uh, random player, 
I think it's random. Oh, it's get player name. Whoops. There we go. And so now if we test it out in our app, we should see a show data function. Oh, hang on, let me just throttle uh, the internet a little bit so that we can actually see that we see an initial notification and then our success notification. So if I click this button, we see our initial notification, we're getting your data, and here's some data, but we're not seeing data because I sort of forgot to display the data. <laughs> so to do that, underneath my button, I'll just do um, random player dot first name. And so if I refresh the page, it might take a little bit of time because it's on slow 3G right now. Oh man, it's really th slow. Let me let me add no throttling. There we go. All right, so now if we go back on three on slow 3G and I click on show data, we're getting your data and then, perfect, here's some data. We got your data, a success icon, and we have the greatest of all time. Awesome, so that concludes this tutorial. By now you should have a pretty good understanding of how to work with the notification system, but I'd highly recommend you go through the documentation and you try it out a little bit more yourself the best way to learn is through practice and through getting your hands dirty with the actual stuff. And this also concludes this series. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this first ever course, this free course on YouTube, whatever. And um, if you did, be sure to like and uh, subscribe. And in the next course, which is going to be starting in the next video, we're going to be learning about how to use Material UI. And uh, I hope you guys join me for that. And if you did enjoy this, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.